Hey, what's going on, everyone? Uh, my name is Alfredo. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, you know, hello. Um, so today is actually a very nice day. So I can finally say I'm finally going to be working on this uh, piece of furniture that I've had in my sitting in my garage and in my driveway for the last year now. Uh, so and finally going to turn it into a running driving car again. So. I uh, don't know if I ever put out the specific, but the engine did have a small failure, which honestly was not that big of a deal. Uh, just required the motor to be torn down and cleaned. Uh, so thank God. Um, later on, once I get the motor back, I will go into details of what actually happened. But for now, I kind of just want to get started and start kind of cleaning up this car and get it ready uh, for once the motor comes back and I build it and finish building it, then... Um, we can kind of just breeze on through it. We won't have much of extra stuff to really deal with. So today's a nice day because I finally get to open a box that I've been hoarding now for a while. Um, so before I had Corbo fixed back seats and they were not the most daily driver friendly seats. So um, meanwhile the car was down, I told myself it was like, no more fixed pack seats once this car is up and running. I kind of did want to fix some other stuff that I've been wanting to add back onto the car, like AC and a different pulley setup, uh, pulley configuration setup. Uh, kind of going to like with PBH setup versus the other one. But uh, some unfortunate things happened, and I wasn't probably not gonna be able to make that happen. So for now, the main goal is get the car running, get uh, all the right parts that we need to have the car running. Um, if I don't need it, I'm not gonna get it now. I'll just worry about it later. It's better to have a fun driving car that has some few imperfections than a perfect car that you're not going to be able to drive for or enjoy for years. So that's, I guess, like my small little tip for the day is just sometimes you just got to get it running. Like forget about trying to make it 100% perfect. Just get the stupid thing running so you can actually go out, enjoy it, relieve some stress, and uh, have fun. So without further ado, let's get to it. So this isn't really going to be much of an unboxing video because I've already kind of peeked in here. But, uh, again, went back with the Corbos. Uh, mainly just because I've kind of already seen their quality. I'm totally cool with their quality for what it is. These seats are very inexpensive for what they are. So these are a set of lightweight, reclinable, uh, like, mid-race seat. They're not super aggressive. Ugh, let's see if I can actually get one out one-handed. They're not super aggressive, so they're still somewhat driver friendly. Uh, so there you can actually see it. I'm going to go ahead and actually fully unbox it and pop out both seats so you guys can actually see them. Alright, and got her out. Uh, and then again, this is kind of, uh, you kind of get what you pay for. So it's not a very expensive seat, so I think for the pair they're only about 800 bucks. But for 800 bucks, I think it's a solid deal. Uh, the waist and the shoulder bolst uh, bolsters they do feel pretty good but on the hip side i feel like there's a, a little bit left you know to be desired so I've, i kind of wish they were a little bit taller to kind of help hold you in the seat but i hope once it kind of breaks in you'll sink in a little bit more um and hopefully it actually holds me <laughs> during some you know while i'm on the canyons or while i'm on the autocross track but overall it, it actually feels pretty comfortable uh, especially now that I can actually lean back slightly so it has pretty good lumbar support and you know good shoulder support and it reclines so <laughs> it's not I'm not sitting up straight at all times in the car and with long drives with this car I would actually drive sometimes about an hour two hours just to go race so at least now I know that I can at least Recline a smidge, chill out while I'm there, and then while I'm at the racetrack, bring it up and, you know, go race, do some cone killing, or go on the, uh, like, bigger tracks like Chuck Walla or Button Willow. Now that I got a truck, I can easily tow the car, so now I'm not afraid of breaking down at one of the big tracks and then not having a way of getting back home. So once uh, we get this thing up and running, we'll definitely be hitting those tracks. But for now, let's uh, go ahead and see how these seats uh, fit in. But first things first, we do have to clean out the interior because this thing has been essentially a part storage for 
for the last year. So I just got a bunch of random crap in here. I do have the new exhaust in there as well. Uh, this car will now officially have full three inch exhaust, so it's gonna be loud. But, and then some other little odds and ends. So got a new cowl panel for it just cause mine's kind of dented. So I bought this as a, just in case, if I do need to replace it, I got it. If I can have someone fix it, then cool. If I can't, then oh well. Uh, I got a replacement, I can replace it. So I've already done that in the past, and then I don't mind replacing the windshield again because I noticed that a lot of my windshields, don't they don't last very long because when I'm doing canyon runs and I'm falling behind people, this thing just gets blasted with pebbles, so it just gets kind of like sandblasted. So at night, it's not the... Like, even though it looks clear now, Five at night, um, all those small little pits, they, they just glare, the, make the light glare like crazy. So I am kind of hoping to at least put a new windshield in this thing again and uh, have some nice glass on it. Maybe I'll look into some kind of glass protection that I can peel off later on after, you know, so many miles. Uh, almost like a screen protector to help it minimize the need to replace windshields because I think this is already going to be my... This is my second windshield, and the last one was pretty bad. It, I've never had a cracked windshield. They're just pitted from, like, small little pebbles just constantly getting tossed at it. But, all right, without further ado, let's go ahead and start cleaning the car and get one of the seats bolted up. Alrighty, so after kind of cleaning up the car and getting our hardware kind of together, um, here is the seat base. So this is a separate item sold by Corbo. So this is specifically for the Fox body to make it adjustable as well. I'm not a huge fan of having a set seat because it makes it a whole ton easier, especially when you got like any kind of aftermarket steering wheel or anything like that, or even a door bar. Um, if you can scoot the seat back right before you get out. So for the hardware, I am going to be adding a little bit of red Loctite because I do not want these things ever coming loose on me, especially not on track. Uh, maybe the, the floor uh, bolts, I will put maybe a little bit of blue Loctite just for vibration purposes. But that way those things never come loose and I never have a single issue with them. So I'm going to go ahead and install this seat base onto the bottom of this seat and test fit the first seat. And this is how it's gonna look once installed into the bottom of the seat. So of course, these uh, seat brackets do have multiple points that they can be bolted in, but these seats require the furthest forward and the furthest back point. So uh, there's not gonna be a whole lot of adjustability there, but it's on slider, so you can adjust it all you want. Uh, so without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead, toss it in and see how it fits. I did dab just a small drop of red Loctite. I did not go crazy with it. I just need it to stay and not come loose because those are way more difficult to get to than, you know, my regular four points. I can easily get to those uh, compared to the Allen head bolts. And since these will be just a regular socket, I'm more likely gonna be carrying sockets with me versus carrying a whole Allen key set and trying to find the right size. So. Let's get these in. And just go ahead and tighten these guys down. Just give them a quick little snug. Same with that guy. And they are done. So one thing that I kinda ha I kinda do uh on purpose, right, is I always pinch my floor mat with my seat bracket it's just enough that it will not slide because i have had it go underneath the throttle ped pedal and if that's ever happened to you you either end up ripping the mats out or you figure out some kind of solution so they never slide again but let's go ahead and test them out these seats actually do feel I would say maybe a little bit higher than my old ones. Um, I think it's just because the padding is a lot, a little bit thicker, but it is pretty nice to have at least some sort of reclinability and adjustability. Now, now I'm not sitting super upright, but field division is great. So if you want my field division, this is pretty much what I'm going to be seeing. Um, car definitely has a lot of work that needs to be done to get it 
you know, cleaned up and running again. You know, progress is progress, so don't forget that. Um, especially if you got a project car, you don't always have to make it perfect. Just get it running. Uh, just get to the point where you can enjoy it again. Um, unless you're one of those psychos that just builds a car just to build it and just dump a bunch of money and then never drive it. But, hmm. let's see if I can actually adjust it. I think it might need a little bit more adjustment, but overall, I can actually lean it back quite a bit and still be able to reach all my pedals nicely. So that's a big key is that you want to be able to reach all your pedals and be relaxed at the same time it's actually pretty nice so now that i actually do have it in the car the hip bolsters actually don't bother me as much they they still feel just a smidge small but it's not so bad once it's actually in the car and i'm actually you know my knees able to bend and droop over the edge a little bit but i kind of like them so i'm gonna go ahead toss the passenger side in super quick same it's the exact same process just on the other side and then we'll see the finished product and here are the seats in so I'll just do a quick little shot of how the interior now looks still got to clean up all the wiring over there still got to put the new dash in um, and get everything set up but I uh, can't really see them yeah, this is what I mean is that this thing is just peppered like crazy, uh, but they look great. All right, so we got the seats in. I actually went ahead and just threw the plastic cover over that one just to kind of try and keep them clean. In the meantime that I'm building the car, I'm going to be in and out, and I don't want to get them all gross uh, just yet. So the seats are in. They feel great. Um, it feels a little bit weird being in the passenger seat right now, but... Overall, I think I really like these seats. Um, again, not too crazy about the side bolstering, uh, or the lower bolstering, I mean. But we'll see once we actually get the car out and start driving it around, see how well it holds me in. A uh, big thing that I did want to talk about, right, was the seat belt. So, if any of y'all have noticed is that I don't run harnesses in this car just yet. Uh, mainly because I don't run a, ha a Hans device. Um, I like the three-point so they these have like really nice inertia locks so if you just pull it too hard it, it won't allow you to go forward so um i've already tested these out <laughs> not intentionally but i've already tested them out they work great if you're in a little bit of an accident so uh for essentially what i do i think these are great um the big reason why i don't run any harness uh is just because i don't want to internally decapitate myself and what that means is that uh, for any, any of you guys that follow like NASCAR, that's essentially what happened to Dale Earnhardt. Um, you know, he had a great state uh, safety device to restrain him in the seat, not so much for his head. So a Hans device, essentially what it does is it clips onto your helmet and it has kind of like shoulder pads that go underneath the harnesses and essentially locks your neck. Uh, so anyone who's running harnesses on the street i would advise you to at least have uh some kind of three point uh on in the car as well and then have the like your four point or your five point for racing only when you have that system on or to look at what you have um and possibly try to look at other at other style harnesses kind of like the scosh i believe is the name of the company i don't know how you pronounce it uh, or I think Crow also has uh, this system as well. Essentially what they do is that they make a four point um, and to keep you from submarining through the harness itself essentially means that you slide up underneath and bash your knees into the dash while it's crumpling in. Um, they have uh, essentially a breakaway device. So on the inner shoulder, uh, what they do is that they add a little bit of extra material and a little bit of stitching that will hold you in for uh, all the G's that you would that you would experience while racing. But if you're ever in an accident, it's weak enough that it'll break and give you that little bit of slack. So it'll give you the best of both worlds. So it'll give you the best of having a four point that holds you securely in the seat, uh, gets you really connected with the car and while you're racing. Uh, but at the same time, it gives you that like awesome Primo safety device uh, that the three points have so it'll allow your body to roll slightly reduce a little bit of that strain on your neck so hopefully it helps out um, for those that are running 
that harness so so far I haven't installed the harness just because I still got to do the whole math and stuff to get the proper angles uh, for my harness bar and for the seats I'll probably have to make some adjustments and I just have not wanted to do any of that yet so I'll probably end up going with that setup that four point setup uh, just because I kind of that would actually end up saving my clavicle a little bit more um, I've also seen people that don't even run a harness bar and then they just run their uh their harness straight to like the rear seat mount somewhere on the floor they just bolted straight down to the floor and they have this gnarly angle uh essentially what's gonna happen there if you don't have a harness bar is that that harness is gonna want to straighten out and it's going to go up against whatever is in its way whenever you you know try and shoot forward it's going to want to straighten down so what's going to, that's going to do is essentially just compress your spine possibly break your clavicle uh possibly break some stuff down here or you know just you're just going to have a very bad day um if you decide to run a harness with no harness bar so that's kind of like the big safety feature of the harness bar when you have the harnesses they're supposed to be properly run, ran like that so if you know somebody who's just freeballing with some harnesses uh on their street car and you know usually i see these more on the honda side and with some cheaper style seats as well uh, a lot of you might know the three letter company as well that for me they're they're very affordable like they make their seats even more affordable than corbos but they also make them a lot more flashier um this this is why i like corbos is that it's a timeless design it's you know probably they probably spend a lot less on the design and probably a little bit more on the safety versus other companies that just want to make their seats and items as flashy and have the stupid little ding and all that stuff um, for all the Instagram reels. Um, I'd rather go with subtle yet effective versus flashy and dangerous. So keep that in mind whenever you guys are buying seats or restraining devices is really look into how they actually work and some of the drawbacks because a harness they will work and they work really good so you're gonna find uh, limitations of other things kind of like your neck so if you have a big head um i mean in general you should not be running a harness without any kind of neck uh protection unless the harness has some kind of like um safety device that's also built into it some kind of relief to allow you to have that slight little bit of roll because that slight little bit of roll not only saves your neck it also prevents you from submarining in your horn in your uh, seat belt as well so it kind of helps you just fold just a smidge so you don't just slide right up underneath and bash your knees into the dash so uh keep that stuff in mind guys if you guys are ever buying seats or harnesses um this is kind of like stuff that you you're you're gonna either gonna want to learn beforehand or you're gonna learn to afterhand after you get into an accident and you see the uh huge drawbacks so for me i was uh lucky enough to see the drawbacks happen firsthand uh not to me or anybody uh or anybody that i know but just through the research process i saw what can happen um and i chose to not be one of those guys so again uh, if, if you either got a really good seatbelt, just go ahead and keep it for whenever you're street driving. And then whenever you go to the track, go ahead and, and get that Hans device on. Um, then later on, you know, you can swap back out to the three point whenever you're street driving and then, you know, hunky dory. But, um, with that, I think, uh, I'm pretty happy with these seats. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, keep moving forward with this project. Again, progress is progress. So, uh, I think it's time to get rid of this, uh, expensive garage ornament piece of furniture that I got and actually make it a running driving car again, because I kind of do miss driving this thing. So again, you don't always have to get it perfect. Just get it running, uh, get it moving and start enjoying your car again. So, uh, with that, I'll catch you guys later. Uh, if you got any questions about the seats, about the fitment, let me know in the comments. I'll try and answer any questions uh, I can. And yeah, so I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.